Welcome to the Week 2 press conference for Gardner-Webb. We'll start with an opening statement from Coach Rocco and then open it up to questions. All right. Uh, once again, thanks a lot uh, for being here today. Uh, just a few uh, closing thoughts here on our uh, game last week up at the University of Virginia. Um, after the game, I was you know, very definitive, very decisive uh, in the locker room. Uh, there's no joy in losing, and we've lost uh, you know, just way too much around here of late. Um, and I'm really not a guy that spends much time finding uh, silver linings. Uh, if you're not careful, uh, you come back sounding like you won the game, finding a number of things that you were comfortable with. Uh, having said that, you know, after watching the film um, a, a number of times, I did see some things that I thought were very encouraging. Uh, and I think some legitimate uh, foundations uh, for us to build upon. Uh, so I did offer that to my football team here um, Sunday night, uh, Tuesday. Uh, and we have since moved forward here on our preparation uh, for Gardner-Webb, a uh, team that I know an awful lot about, having uh, spent six years in the Big South Conference and competing against Gardner-Webb in each of those six seasons. Uh, I'm very excited to be back at home. This will be my first uh, home game opportunity here at the University of Richmond, and you know, very excited about that. Looking forward to a great crowd and a lot of energy and enthusiasm uh, at the stadium uh, Saturday night, and hopefully we'll come out and get off to a fast start, something that we did not do uh, a week ago. At this time, I'll open it up to any questions uh, here from the media. John. Hey, Danny Watford runs on everybody, uh, yeah. but is that an indication that you can run the ball or that that option, the offense they're so good at, can run the ball? I think it was the, the offense. Um, I, I don't know that you would have had any reason to, uh, you know, track the uh, Watford Gardner Webb game other than looking at the statistics. The game was played in a monsoon. I mean, there is no doubt about it. It was sideways rain, heavy winds. Just very um, difficult situation uh, to compete and play a game. And it was delayed, I think, once or twice. So their running the ball is a function of the weather being what it was and then their uh, ability to do that on just about anybody. Um, the one thing that uh, Gardner-Webb chose to do in that game uh, was they blitzed on 75% of the snaps. Uh, they had everybody up on or near the line of scrimmage. Uh, it's kind of been their M.O. a little bit. They, they've had a lot of success in, in the, the Big South Conference in tackles for loss and sacks and, and, and just being disruptive in the backfield. But they've also given up some big plays. And I think early on they had some success against Wofford, but as the game went on, some of those plays they were making in the backfield were then turning into longer runs and, and big plays for the Wofford offense. What did you see in the two scoring TD scoring drives at UVA that clicked for the offense? You seemed to speed up the tempo on the first one. Well, we had three drives for touchdown in the game. Um, uh, a nine play, a 10 play, and a 12 play, I believe, all for you know pretty legitimate uh, distances. And um, there's a lot to be encouraged about with that. Uh, it's hard to sustain a 12 play drive. It's hard to do it versus air. Uh, just because of penalties and procedures and, and things along those lines, throwing and catching the ball. Um, we had a uh, procedure in place offensively where we did change our tempo uh, quite often in the game, uh, either hustling up to the line of scrimmage to snap the ball quickly or not huddling at all and just getting up on the line and calling and executing a play. Uh, we did create some advantages in those situations. We, on occasion, had their defense uh, off balance a little bit, uh, which allowed us to be able to do that. Uh, John threw the ball well in those two drives that he was in there on in terms of moving the ball down the field and being efficient in, in the passing game with a higher completion percentage. Uh, so those all factor in. Uh, I had said earlier in the week, you know, we only had three penalties in the game. Uh, two were in the kicking game, one was on offense. Um, 
and uh, it was a situation where we didn't have any procedure penalties, didn't have any delay penalties. Uh, the tempo was pretty good. The communication was pretty good. Substitutions were really good. You know, those are all things that in an opening game I think are very important. Then obviously in a game like that game and that environment, you know, showed our kids were focused and in tune and ready to play. Uh, you can't drive the ball like that if you don't have good focus and execution. Coach, you had said that the first game will help you realize what you got. Do you know or will it take <clears throat> A game at home to fully understand what you're. Well, you know, I, I think it's going to take a season for me to really know holistically, you know, what I've got. I, I do know though that um, I remain very optimistic. You know, coming back from uh, the game at Charlottesville, obviously, you know, you know, I was very disappointed, uh, but yet not discouraged uh, in the outcome. Um, and as I continued to study the film, I saw plenty of physicality. I, I, I thought both of our lines had some physicality. Our ability to protect our quarterback was very significant. It was certainly a major objective for us this season. Uh, and to be able to do it in that game, I thought, was key. John got rid of the ball, made some good decisions that way. Uh, but so there are some real uh, major foundations that I saw that I think we can build a program around and, and certainly build upon our season. But like any team, uh, especially a team that's in transition with a new coach, a new philosophy and style, uh, it's a, always a process that's an ongoing process. And we got to just uh, try to maximize that each week and be one of those teams that just continues to get better as the players continue to understand and buy into the system that's in place. <clears throat> Coach, uh, can I ask you to define what um, that bandit position is that, that uh, Aaron Roan is playing and, and share your thoughts on, on how he played that position Saturday in Charlotte? Yeah, I think that um, the, the two most challenging positions in our defense are the bandit position and the rover position. Uh, the bandit position, uh, Aaron Roan's playing and Deshaun Holmes are kind of split in time there. Um, it's truly really a cross between a, uh, a linebacker and a down safety. In some people's schemes, they would uh, personnel that position to be a, a safety type player uh, that's always down, sky force, curl flat, man coverage on the tight end. In our system, he's a hybrid because he does do that, but he also has to be like a linebacker. Uh, so there has to be an element of size and physicality there uh, so that you can hold up at the point of attack on the power play. You can match up on the tight end in the run game, hold your ground, set an edge to the defense, but yet still be able to walk away out in space, line up over the slot, defend the flat, defend the wheel, attack the screens, uh, and he's a player that will bring quite often on pressure and blitz. So it's a, uh, it's a tough position to play, um, and Aaron's off to a really good start. A lot of tackles in the game. You know, there, there's some things that, you know, he needs to see a little quicker. There, there's a reality uh, as you play uh, on the perimeter that uh, you have to be trained with your eyes to uh, – uh, see run pass and then respond appropriately as quickly as you possibly can and that comes at repetition but he's got all the skills the skill set that you need to have uh, to play that position um, and I think he's off to a really good start.